Welcome back to another video, and I'm here with Brandon. Uh, he got fifth place at the Fargo Regional uh, with his Altergeist deck, and um, I'll just let him explain. All right, so starting out, we ran the usual Altergeist cards. Start with uh, three copies of Altergeist Metal Seek. Um, one of the best starters of the card of the deck. Um, searches your multi faker, or if you already have a multi faker, search the marionette for next turn. Also attacks directly and sends to the grave. Doesn't destroy, which comes up a lot. The other core normal summon is the three of Marionetter. Marionetter sets a trap. You guys know what it does. Um, so basically, if depending if you see both of these in your opening hand, if you have a spoofing, you're gonna want to summon the Marionetter. But if you don't have the spoofing, you need to get to your uh, multi faker. So then you summon the Melu Seek first. Um, so basically, it's which it depends on what your hand is to see which one you summon first. And then the two Sil, one multi faker, and the one Alter Geist Kinkuri. Kinkuri came up a lot today. Um, targeted a Babel, stopped that from being able to bring stuff back from the grave. That was pretty huge. Um, other monsters I ran were three copies of Ash Blossom. And then the one of Blue Boy, which came up a lot actually. So I'm also running two secrets and two knowledge. I am not running the Pot of Extravagance. So I've been playing this deck for about two years now, and I ran the Extravagance last year. I got my invite that way. Um, I got sick of banishing multiple copies of Hextia, and honestly, being able to resolve multiple copies of Pot of Extravagance was more hurtful than it was good um, because then you're stuck with three cards in your extra deck. Um, the Spellbook engine allows you to one, see draw cards more often, and two, you don't have the negative of banishing copies of Altergeist next to you. Uh, this was the first time I've played this deck at a competitive format, and I think this is how I'm going to play it going forward. Um, yeah, and then uh, in my last game in time, I ended up not most summoning um, Spellbook Magician Prophecy and attacking for game for 500. So, extra little worth there. Um, I'm also running two copies of Instant Fusion. So, if you do open a Spellbook card and Instant Fusion, you can activate Instant Fusion, Special Summon the Millennium Eyes and then you can activate Spellbook of Knowledge, and because Millennium Eyes stops hand traps and Knowledge does not send as cost, it guarantees you dig two cards deeper into your deck and you preserve your normal summon, which is pretty huge, um, increasing your chances of seeing that Marionette or Spoofing and Melo Seek. Um, and again, so Instant Fusion, I also ran one Millennium Eyes and 1,000 Eyes for going first and second. Um, avoids Ash Blossom, helps get through boards. So, and then I ran two pot of duality. This does conflict with the instant fusion, but in a deck that relies so much on its core normal summon, you absolutely needed to see either spoofing, marionette, or Melusique, or the faker. And pot of duality came in up a lot today. It's kind of a must now. Um, I main deck two super poly. Um, it came up quite a bit. I used it against Thunder Dragon Psalm. Um, I also used it against Orcust. The and I also run it with uh, Mud Dragon of the Swamp. So because Alter Guys are all different attributes, you can basically out any card that your opponent controls with Super Polymerization. You just need to use Spoofing to get to the Alter Guys card you need. It can also, like, if they have a BLS, you can special summon your Conquery and then activate Super Poly um, using the Earth Monster and Earth Monster to out it. And yeah, came up a lot. I really was side decking the third one. One Monster Reborn. Uh, this was kind of a mistake. Uh, hindsight, I think I would have rather ran an upstart or maybe even a solemn warning. Uh, but it came up. Um, I bricked one game and this brought me back to Melo Seek, which got Ash in the first place and I won because of it. So it did come up, but I would have rather had a little more consistency. Typical one manifestation, two protocol, three spoofing. I wouldn't change that lineup at all. Spoofing's honestly the best card of the deck. Getting it to resolve is just so much advantage. And you can use multiples per turn. Um, it's nice to be able to shuffle back from query, add it to hand, and then to get another attack. People don't usually see that coming. Um, three copies of Infinite Impermanence. Uh, I did open it in Permanence Faker one time. Uh, won me the game. I was going second. It just generates so much advantage. 
And it's the best hand trap to run with this because you can also set it for next turn and resolve a multi-faker off of it. So it's kind of a must. Uh, the old man package, wrapping up my 40 cards. Uh, strike is to stop hand traps. If you open a Melu Seek, sometimes it's best not to send it to grave right away if you have the protocol with it because they can negate its effect with Ash Blossom and then if you're dead in the water, um, you're just out of luck. Solemn Strike I decided on instead of Call by the Grave, uh, just came up more. And then Knowledge is, or uh, Solemn Judgment is basically why this deck's still relevant. All right, moving on to the uh, extra deck here. Like I said, we're running the two Instant Fusion targets. Both came up. Um, I really wanted the Monster Reborn, the Millennium Eyes, but that never happened today. Uh, Thousand Eyes just outed so many issues for me. Uh, Super Poly targets. I uh, didn't play against any Salad, but I was glad I had it in case it did come up. Uh, this card's busted. I used a Link Karibo and two Thunder Monsters to make it at one point. Just absolutely phenomenal. Um, good for outing anything, like I said before. Dragospalia does come up, and Starving Venom, of course, is probably the one I use more than anything else. From there, we ran three copies of Altergeist Hextia. Um, I don't know what I need to say about this card. It is the absolute best card in any Altergeist deck. Getting this to stick on the field is just game. Something a lot of people don't do is uh, summon something under it, set the manifestation uh, during your opponent's turn. And this is, sometimes I like to, if I know I'm playing against a, like a striker deck or something that uses a lot of back row, I'll summon Marionetta and I'll set the manifestation instead of the protocol. Um, and then the first spell they activate, I'll negate with Hextia send it to the graveyard, activate a manifestation, bring it back. This is not a hard once per turn, so you can negate multiple spells and traps with one Altergeist Hexty effect. And if you play it right, you can still get a Faker off of another trap and get a third negated. Um, very, very good card. Uh, Cerberus, good for outing that Nibiru token because we're not exactly the strongest deck in the world. Uh, Phoenix, just because it's generic. Um, Kajka Magician, so sometimes with the Spellbook Engine, you can uh, always put that Nibiru token in the column that you can bounce it. Um, that does come up. You can go uh, Instant Fusion, Summon Thousand Eyes or Millennium Eyes, and then Normal Summon Meluseek. Um, if you summon the Thousand Eyes, obviously you can um, use its effect to remove one of their monsters, and then you can summon those two into a Cosmic Magician, uh, bounce a second one of their monsters, and then activate Spellbook of Knowledge, and then draw two cards. And if you used uh, Mellow Seek for this, obviously you still get to search the multi. Um, one Crowley for searching the Spellbook Engine if you have Instant Fusion and like a Mellow Seek or Marionetta. Didn't come up today, glad I have it. Um, I just think it's good utility. And then the one of Link Rebo. No, we don't run three and three um, Silent Man Great Almirage. We don't need to um, because we're not running Extravagance. Uh, one's all you need and one's all that came up. Um, yeah, that's about it for the extra deck. I'm up to 15. Um, one thing I will say is, oh, well, I'll get to that later, but side deck, three evenly matched. Uh, extremely good. Evenly matched Faker is just game. Didn't come up today, but glad you have it. Three Nibiru, um, played against a Marincess deck. Um, Nibiru is just one of the best cards this format. Uh, three Lost Wins, this card is just phenomenal. Um, so every time, I'm, if I know I'm going first, I would side out my Infinite Impermanence and side in Lost Wind, because it gets dual utility and it's just better than the Impermanence. Um, and the second time I would like to use this is taking out the Solemns when I was going into time, because you still need to have effect negation. You can't just go into game three with five, ten minutes left and run six Solemn cards and expect to be fine. Um, the third Super Poly, like I said before, Two wiretaps, uh, good against other control decks. Uh, stops red reboot, stops evenly match. I didn't really side it in every time like I used to like six months ago because not as many people are running red reboot, but it is huge against other uh, control decks. And the last cards were three Cosmic Cyclone because, well, it's the best back row removal right now with Orcusk and Salaman great running around. So I uh, absolutely, um, I don't think I make any changes to my extra deck um, or my side deck for that matter. Uh, yeah, deck performed very well. My one loss was to uh, Thunder Dragon deck. I lost the die roll and 
I just couldn't get the ball rolling. I didn't see the Mel seek in the opening hand. I saw the spoofing, but that can't quite resolve. So, yeah. All right. Uh, well, thank you, Brandon, uh, for the deck profile, and congratulations again, fifth place, and getting your invite to the WCQ. Um, but yeah, um, if you guys enjoyed uh, this deck profile, leave it down in the comment section below, and um, if you guys have any questions about his deck at all. Um, and yeah, um, if you like, comment, definitely subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video. Have a nice day.